Hello, and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode 109. I am your host, Anton. We have today with us a guest, Hayden. Hayden, welcome to Apex Instant Tips. Happy Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday to you. Um, so uh, what do we have going today? So uh, you wrote a blog that I think everyone uh, should benefit, would benefit from studying. Uh, I thought that uh, th there's more content in this blog um, uh, about writing fast queries than can be covered in a single episode. I thought it would be a good use of our time to cover it over however many episodes in, it, it requires to um, to give these uh, points of yours some discussion. All right. Well, Hashnode says that it's an eight minute read. Um, but... I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> But let's see what we can do in just five minutes. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and share my screen. We'll kick off the timer and we'll get going. Um, so uh, this is the blog post. And um, the first item here is have a lot of test data in your development environment. And viewers of our series will be familiar with this advice. Um, we've covered it before. We gave it as an entire episode all about this, episode 85. Um, in which we advocate for making use of the Apex data generator. to So you have no excuse to not have as much data as you need to uh, reproduce your production-like um, uh, performance and development. Right, and of course, having a lot of test data in your development environment doesn't actually make your queries any faster, but it does keep it right up there when you're thinking about you know doing stuff in dev. If it's slow in dev, you're gonna fix it, right? So yeah. I, I think it's a an overlooked uh, performance tuning advice is to have a lot of data there. Um, the next one, use the join keyword in your SQL. Um, and for me, obviously it doesn't change the speed of your query, but it does, it does call out the specific of this right here. It makes it really obvious where it is. And yeah, so, then- so this is no doubt a controversial tip. I, I work with people who would fight me on, <laughs> On on the uh, on using ANSI versus Oracle syntax, but I you're preaching to the choir. I, I'm I, I think it's much easier to read um, when it's ANSI syntax. Right, and be, because it's ANSI syntax, I can see right away. I need an index on both sides of sides of this. There should be an index on both sides of this um, in both tables. You don't actually need it in some cases, but but if you if you err in that direction, it's going to go a long way into just making your queries uh, faster. And, and I think we have a a quick demo coming up of um, the virtue explaining, evidencing why an index is important. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get there for sure. Um, the next one, it's sort of in that same realm. If you have something like this, um, where you've got a function uh, on one of them, you, you wanna have a function-based index here um, so that, that you can make use of that, that index. Um, so, so that's one takeaway. Another takeaway might be your data model is imperfect and you should fix your data model. So uh, in, in this example, perhaps um, you're uh, on, on the input side of things, you should make sure that depth no is in fact um, uh, a car value. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Um, the other thing I'll say is this can be your own function. It can be a custom function, but if it is a custom function, that custom function needs to be deterministic. Um, so uh, the, the um, <laughs> where's Rich? Uh, so so that's just a quick um, a quick note. You can actually use your own functions in when you're building function based indexes. Uh, next one, and this is where we start our demo. Um, if you frequently do a max or a min or other kind of aggregation, I'm using max and min sort of generically for aggregations. Um, you you might want an index on both columns. And what does this? What magic happens here, Hayden? Well, you're giving your query the opportunity to not consult the table at all and only consult the index that you've created. You're telling me that I can get back things like project ID and created date without reading the table at all? Yeah, so you can skip project budget altogether and only consult the index. Let's take a look. Um, so if I come here and this right here, if I do, if I run this query and I check my explain plan, um, we'll see right here, table access, it's reading the entire table. And time. not to gloss over it, um, many people don't know that th this explain plan tab exists when they're running queries in SQL Workshop. Right. 
it's it's a must use utility. Um, so definitely pay attention when you're at Google Workshop. Agreed. So now if we jump to our object browser, and now I'm going to build an index with both those columns, project ID and created. Let's go ahead and rebuild that. Okay, so we've built it. Now let's go do the same thing. Run it and take so a look was at it. table access full, and what is it going to be now? It's going to be index fast full scan. Yeah, so I, no, uh, no reference to project budget at all. It's only going to project budget ID X2. Right, right, it's exactly. It doesn't read the table. It just yeah. reads the, the index. Um, and so I'm going to jump way down to the bottom of this blog post to my final double asterisk at this to say, I sometimes get this response. I don't know what the indexes are on the table. That's the DBA's job. Well, if your DBA is doing that, I mean, props to your DBA. Uh, <laughs> I've never worked in an environment where a DBA does that. Right. You're, you're the one that knows who, you know, what queries are being run. You need to think about these kinds of indexes. Um, yeah, we're yeah. at two seconds to go. Go ahead, Hayden. You get the last word. Yeah. Your DBA might um, uh, bring something to your attention or fix it if there's a problem. But our goal is not to just put out fires. Our goal is to write fast queries. Um, I love that, that last statement, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly it. Um, being proactive, thinking about this and these items every single time you write a query. And that's something that I didn't cover, but it's at the beginning of this blog post is that I, th I think about these things for every query I write, even if I'm just writing the query, you know, and I think I'm only writing it one time in the development environment or something like that. I think about, I think about these things because if I'm writing it one single time in development, there's a really good chance that that query is going to end up somehow being generated in my production environment. Interactive reports, fasted searches, all kinds of things dynamically create queries. And if you need this information in your dev environment, odds are really good somebody's going to look for the same stuff in production. So, so I, I think I missed like 10 seconds there, but... Uh... Uh, hopefully it was only you that missed it. Um, I'm not sure... I worry that my network connection is a little unstable today, but. I, I think it was on my end. Okay. <laughs> um, so we um, are now at the point where we tell people if they want to leave, they can, you know, do all the things like blah, 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 blah. Um, mm -hmm. Right. And beat it if you don't want to hear me ramble. But I have a new segment today. Um, and the new segment is uh, a nostalgia moment. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you, Mark. Um, so, Hayden, back in the day, um, ASCII art was a big deal. Um, and uh, I, I dug up an old um, install of what is now Oracle Apex. Rewinding 25 years, I don't know, something of that nature to about 2001, this right here is an original copy of the install for Oracle Apex, which in those days was Oracle Flows. And isn't that beautiful, our, our ASCII art there, Oracle Flows? Yeah, I, I, I wanna frame this on my wall. <laughs> um, and so it, it actually made me think about sort of more ASCII art. Some of the ASCII art that, uh, that I um, used to love was people's signatures because everything was, um, back in those days, email clients and everything, it was all monospace, you know, fonts. So you could do some fun, uh, fun ASCII art. So I've got um, like this little bicyclist, that's all ASCII art. I, I, um, I used to have signatures of that kind of thing. Um. <laughs> yes. uh, delightful. Um, the world has, uh, has lost something by no longer adopting monospace everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Right. Um, there is a realm where we still consistently use monospace, um, and that's in writing code. Right, exactly right. And that's what made me think of, uh, of, of this, the Oracle Flow. That, and I cannot, with good conscience, recommend to you that you toss a little ASCII art into your code. However, right. I, I, but I will. like it. <laughs> I think I, this is brilliant. Um, I, I would, who doesn't want their code to be a little bit more fun? 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, like I'm going to doll up my comments with a little bit of art. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go one step farther in our nostalgia moment. This nostalgia moment takes us all the way back to 2001. Um, uh, so the um, the nostalgia, the second nostalgia moment I have takes us all the way back to Apex 22.1. Wow. So in Apex 22.1 you could go to cross page utilities. So if you're in your application, you go to, you go to application utilities, cross page utilities, and you get this grid edit of all pages. Do you remember that way back to apex 22.1? My memory doesn't go back that far. Well, now we're on apex 23.1. We've lost it. And we've lost it. Oh, the good old Never days. Realized. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I really want to be able to do this on mm. a whole bunch of pages right now. And if somebody knows how to do it, uh, I know a way that I shouldn't do it, that I'm going to end up well, doing it. If, if somebody knows. What I really want is a PLSQL API for doing that. Yeah, this is true. Um, so I can still hear Hayden, um, but uh, I can't see any motion. So um, keep talking, Hayden. <laughs> I um, uh, apologize. I don't know what's going on with my internet connection stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, that's what you get for a live show. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, well, that is my nostalgia moment for today. Uh, do all the things you're supposed to do, like, subscribe, send a letter to your mom about the show. And see you next week. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye, everyone.